Just like copper marked a revolution in tool production, so too did the discovery of bronze mean a great leap forward in the craft of metallurgy and the creation of blades, tools and weapons. Bronze items and the knowledge of bronze working gradually moved from Mesopotamia to the Mediterranean and the Balkans into Central Europe and beyond. Perhaps the greatest item to demonstrate the skills of bronze casters are the bronze trumpets, lures from Northern Europe, showing the advancement of technique in objects other than weapons. Bronze alloy is a mixture of two metals, copper and tin. The percentage of tin used in the forging of bronze artifacts varied depending on the type and purpose, but it usually revolved around nine parts copper and one part tin. The hardness and durability could also be manipulated with the smelting temperatures, the higher the temperature, the harder would the alloy become. The classic bronze alloy was harder, contained more tin and was used for weapons like swords, spearheads and axes. The more mild bronze alloy was softer and contained less tin, but was better forgeable and was used for objects like sickles. Ratio could also be adapted due to aesthetic reasons. Increased percentage of tin could give artifacts a more metallic, silvery sheen. Because of fewer ore sites, tin was also a more valued material. While tin was purposely added to enhance the alloy, other elements were also present in the ancient bronze objects. While the amount and ratio of these impurities could help us determine the location of the original ores used by the ancient people, this is made difficult because bronze was often remelted and reworked into different artifacts. Some objects from the Late Bronze Age and Early Iron Age contained an extremely high proportion of lead, even too high for weapons like axes to be practical, making it probable that such weapons and tools were more of an expression of power and prestige, rather than utility. Other common impurities include nickel, arsenic and antimony. Bronze is a harder metal than copper, making bronze weapons better suited for sharper blades. However, a lot of early bronze weapons in Europe were more suited for thrusting motions due to their design. Additionally, bronze blades could be made thinner and longer than their shorter, copper predecessors. Another advantage of bronze alloy is that it flowed better into molds, enabling more intricate designs of items like jewelry, ornaments and horse riding equipment. The Bronze Age also marks the beginning of separating daggers from knives. That is, separating multipurpose tools from the weapons made from start to finish with the specific intention of acting as a weapon, a tool for killing. This can be best seen in the changing shape of blades, from a wide, cutting blade, to the concave, stabbing one. This was achieved through multiple sharpenings of the dull blade with a whetstone, eventually gaining the altered shape, more resembling a spike. Soon enough, daggers of such shapes were intentionally cast as thrusting weapons. Of course many grey areas between the two types continued to exist across the world. The daggers and weapons of Mycenae were a prime example of master craftsmanship, both because of their construction and their detailed and rich decoration of gold and silver depictions. Meanwhile, the swords of Europe were already manufactured in the early European Bronze Age, around 2000 BC. Weapons from early and middle Bronze Ages are relatively rare finds. Most are uniquely made daggers and swords with elaborate decorations of incised lines and geometric patterns, probably made for the leading men of contemporary societies. These prestigious weapons were rarely found in European graves, but more often in watery sites, indicating they were some kind of votive offerings. The early bronze blades of Europe maintained the shorter length and widened base to fit the handguard and fastened with rivets. Swords of that time were mostly unique, and often contained false rivets that didn't actually connect the blade and the hilt. This indicates that such swords were less effective as weapons, especially in slicing motion, but could still be effective at thrusting and especially as symbols of status and prestige. The early Bronze Age also saw the use of proto-halberds, using smaller, riveted blades in the end of a longer staff. The arsenal of a warrior at the end of the early Bronze Age would contain a halberd, dagger and a sword, all products of bronze. The technique of a tang and a pommel being cast in a single piece with a blade, eliminating weaker joints, also allowed for the swords to be made more rapidly, enabling more serial manufacture. Blade and hilt shapes varied between areas, from broadleaf to straight shapes. The rarer, solid hilt swords probably maintained their prestigious significance even into the Late Bronze Age, when they were outnumbered by the newer flange hilt swords. Flange hilt swords were the most common type in the Middle and Late Bronze Age. An organic, most probably wooden grip would be attached with rivets to the flanged hilt and handguard plate. As with swords, daggers too developed from the handguard plate to the flange hilt in the Late Bronze Age. Daggers curved at the center are characteristics of the Urnfield culture that spanned across a vast part of Europe. It is not swords that are the most common weapon finds of the Late Bronze Age, but spearheads. 
These would be found in the hoard deposits, as well as stray finds near watery bodies. There are even examples of being found stuck within a human skeleton. Such bog bodies were found across Europe, especially in Scandinavia and British Isles. Perhaps the person died in battle, but more probable is the assumption that these were either punished criminals or individuals sacrificed to divine forces. A characteristic type of a spear is one with a paired rib decoration. These are typical for the time of 13th and 12th century BC and spread from present-day Germany to the Aegean during the time of the so-called Bronze Age collapse, when the area of the eastern Mediterranean was in a great turmoil by internal and external threats, most famously by the Sea Peoples. Axes also went through an interesting evolution. People have always wanted to keep the axe head attached as firmly as possible. Already in the Neolithic, the method of attaching the stone axe head to the rod was mostly focused on creating a hole through the head and attaching it that way, creating shaft hole axes. Most modern day axes still work by this principle. However, during the Bronze Age, such axes were mostly absent throughout the continent. Instead, different designs were used, first axe with flanges, then winged axes with medial wings and winged axes with butt wings, which were typical at the transition into the Iron Age. In addition to those, bronze socket axes were also used. They had a tubular socket into which the haft was inserted and secured with straps, which passed through the eye on the side. While they still did the job, such designs are less practical and effective so their use was not a result of improved engineering, but rather had cultural motives. The finds of sickles and socket axes in Central Europe indicate connections with the east, the wider Pannonian plain, while winged axes were more typical towards the Alps and northern Apennine Peninsula. The bronze winged axes of the Eastern Alps often bear incised markings. While it would be easy to assume these are the first examples of a written language in the area, opinions of archaeologists differ. Some scholars believe them to be workshop marks, while others that they could be royal inscriptions, like those in the Eastern Mediterranean, or votive inscriptions of the axes offered in sanctuaries. The context of such a writing system therefore remains open. Sets of armor and shields too were becoming more and more prominent. The armor could be made of organic material, like bones, teeth and tusks, or metal or combination of the two. Like the weapons, armor also served as a symbol of prestige. A warrior of the late Bronze Age would have at his disposal a dagger, a sword and a winged axe with medial wings. A male attire also included a single bronze pin to fasten clothing, a custom that was characteristic of the Central European tumulus culture. Notable women of that time often had two pins, but in the late Bronze Age their fashion transitioned towards brooches. Bronze was utilized for other types of weapons as well, from arrowheads to war picks. During the 10th and 9th century BC, the first iron weapons reached inland Europe, imported from the Aegean. The beginning of the Iron Age in Central Europe is settled at around 800 BC, which would last until the Roman expansion over a large part of the continent in the 1st century BC.